Hello, everybody, and welcome to Creative Minds. This is episode three. I'm here with Emarias. Hello, everybody. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about our creative processes, so how we make videos from start to finish. So I think this is going to be really fun, since we're both YouTubers who create videos. And we both have a creative process. Yeah, that's how things yeah. get done. <laughs> It's very interesting how I come up with ideas because usually they kind of just come out of nowhere. And a perfect example of this was Saturday. I went while cleaning. I just thought of a video idea out of the blue. I'm not going to say what it was because, you know, spoilers, but I'm, I'm really excited about it. In fact, I even started the script writing of it because I'm like, this is going to be really good. Also, it's not going to be a heavily intense edited video because this video that I'm working on, which I've been working on since Wednesday, so like five days <laughs> in editing, it's crazy. Yeah, ideas are very interesting. Sometimes I get them in the shower, sometimes cleaning. Sometimes I literally sit down and force myself to think of ideas where I'm like, okay, I'm looking at my creative calendar and I need video ideas because I'm running low. Yeah, and then when I have those ideas, I write them down on my creative calendar. Every time, after after an intense graphics video, mm -hmm. your next idea is usually like, I don't want to do any more graphics stuff. <laughs> right, yeah. Please let me just talk to camera. Yeah, but you know? kind of, yeah. And that kind of helps the idea flow. Oh, definitely, like, okay. yeah. Mm. But yeah, I'm, I'm exactly the same way. But a lot of my stuff comes when showering, and when I try to force myself, it's like it doesn't come out, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it always just like hits you out of nowhere, it seems. Like you start thinking of something, and then that transitions into a video idea, and you're like... Wait, wait a minute. Whoa, what's this? And then it kind of spirals into a script sometimes. Yeah. I don't know about you, but when I'm driving, oh boy, <laughs> I don't want to crash, but I got to take this idea down, you know? It's not easy. Uh -huh, right. I feel like audio recording would be best for that, perhaps. Yeah. Oh boy. I have like randomly placed ideas in random places that I need to mm -hmm. go back, but I always get a new idea right, by the time the yeah. weekend comes. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, but if I really need one, I can probably, you know, sort through the recycling, wait, not recycling, yeah. sort through the depths of my phone and figure out you know untitled dot mp3 <laughs> listen to it right like, okay yeah. that's a great idea it's kind of weird though because yeah. like i'll have these videos scheduled but then a new idea pops up like literally yesterday and i'm like okay this is going to be the next video because one i'm excited about it and two i yeah. already have like half of the script planned in my head so it's like why don't we just do this after this yes yeah i agree master if like uh one of the tips i have for getting ideas is uh, i think i googled this and it's conducted by research you know credible stuff you get ideas uh more often when you're relaxed so mm -hmm. that's why uh usually before bed i'm just chilling and i'm like i gotta go to sleep might as well be productive now i'm just gonna mm -hmm. you know brainstorm some ideas script writing this is one of my favorite parts of creativity obviously editing is my favorite but script writing i would have to say is my second favorite when it's something that i love to write about i like to write about it you know that's when i really like writing because i remember when i was in school i hated writing because it was all always about these things that i did not care about like historical figures or i had to write a poem i i just don't care but poems. when i do care about it yeah it's just like yeah you know i I've, I've written a few poems in my day one was about coffee but that's not important so most of the time i write scripts on a program on my computer called LibreOffice. oh i used to use microsoft word and then my friend told me about LibreOffice, and so i installed it and i'm like holy cow this is way better and now he's using something else but i, I i'm sticking with LibreOffice because i love it i really like it the design and and everything and I'm just used to it so I know how it works I mean I don't uh, do I don't do things that are too complicated because you know it's script writing it's just basically writing words and paragraphs and whatnot I like the look of it yeah, what do you what do you use to write scripts what programs do you use to write it on Google Docs oh so I have oh, it wow. everywhere okay. mm. so I can access on my computer and my phone and you know that's what I was wondering about LibreOffice apparently you can't do that I thought you could but you can't there's an app but I don't think it connects, which is very stupid. But Google Docs does that because I think it'd be really cool to access all of my scripts from my phone and my computer and be able to like edit on my phone and it appear on the computer. That'd be insanely helpful instead of like writing it on my memos and then sending it through email and then copy pasting it. It's just like reduce version equals win. I should try Google Docs, but I don't want to have to move everything to that. You can upload it. Literally check all your LibreOffice Docs. 
and uh, make a drive for YouTube and just upload it. You can even access your LibreOffice stuff through Google Drive. It becomes a Docs Docs. So it's pretty, it's pretty intense, dude. It's the best. Yeah, I should do that because one of the reasons I've been considering that is because more recently I've been writing scripts on my phone, which isn't normal for me. But the thing is, I'm trying to be productive in any way I can. So let's say... Yeah, let's say in car rides when I'm doing nothing for like 30 minutes, it's like, why not write part of a script on my phone, you know? So that way, when I get home, I have part of it done, which that's actually what happened with this script. Part of it was actually written on my phone. And it's just like, whoa, that's cool. I am glad I did that because that saves time. It's helping me be productive. So being able to connect it from my phone to my computer easily, I I just think that would help a lot more with being productive. I recommend it to all the listeners out there. Well, I do a lot of script writing in the shower because that's when ideas flow the best, (laughs) Um, which which is the most, you know, efficient but when you know the water bill is included you know in the rent you're like okay it's a flat fee might as well just uh, <laughs> do it yeah. in the shower plus you got a waterproof phone here's the deal i don't know if my phone is actually waterproof and i've never really tested it out because i've been afraid to although all i could literally do is just look it up on google to figure it out but i haven't even done that for me in the shower i don't have my phone because it's like one of the times that i don't have my phone which is why i think sometimes that's where i get my ideas every once in a while it's because my phone's not there and i have time to think that's true yeah that makes sense um i i like the master reef point of view in this case <laughs> tbh nice so master reef when you write your scripts how fancy are they because mine are very like if it's like a dialogue between people I don't even write who's talking when. I just, I know it. And I know that like, you know, a couple of years down the line, if I look back at it, I'll be like, who was, who was what? But I, I just try to reduce friction as much as I can and just, you know, write down dialogue. When it, when it comes to dialogue, I give each person a line. If one yeah. person is talking, I give them a line. I don't make a full paragraph of dialogue for like the conversation. I give each person like a space basically. I- I'm trying to figure out how to explain this because I know I'm not explaining this good enough. When I write scripts now, I don't really have dialogue lines because it's yeah. just paragraphs. But when I do write dialogue, it's not in a paragraph form. You know, it's kind of like a movie script. I feel like I need to get better personally at writing scripts. They're all so messy. And so I'm trying to find some like local tubers to collaborate with and stuff mm-hmm. and grow. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really like trying to learn how to make like an actual script script so they can be like actually read that's why i type out my scripts (laughs) and print them out okay i swear there is i don't know what it is first of all it's just so satisfying when you write it down in your computer for hours and hours and then you print it out and you can literally like hold the pages in your hand and see the words it's first of all it's just really cool second of all it just helps me especially with recording because i just i just have the script right in front of me you know off camera so it's just it just helps plus i really like how I structure my scripts where it's just like paragraphs basically I kind of structured this script differently due to what I was talking about and I kind of really like it but this is like a different kind of video too do you have like a, a binder for all your scripts now they collect that would be kind of cool um, to see. I don't have a binder. I should. Right now, I'm just keeping them in one of my drawers in my dresser. Yeah. I mean, I do the same thing, but I just don't print it, you know? Because I like Google Drive on the phone. That's my paper. Plus, I have to, you know, go down, you know, eight, eight floors to print, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. My printer is like 10 steps away. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, also, yeah. I just thought of this question because I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about it and I never, I've never thought about this before, but what what font do you use when you write scripts? You you probably use like a typewriter font. No, I don't because I think that looks, it looks old. The default font. No time to think about fonts. I just start writing. I use a very specific font and I think it's the font that like came with this program, but I really like it. It's called Liberation Serif Ooh. and it looks really nice. Professional. Serif fonts are the best. It just looks looks so clean it's not chiller <laughs> so you know when you're writing scripts you have something easy for your eyes or else you'll- yeah exactly now once the script is written you got to set up for recording that's 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 the harder part i mean for you especially since you got like these green screens and three lights going and it's just like it's a profesh setup compared to mine <laughs> It used to be kind of hard until I, uh, you know, emptied a whole room for the studio mm. life 
And now it's a lot easier, TBH. I mean, I, I don't really feel you because I do everything in my room. So <laughs> it would be nice to have my own office, though. That's something that I'm looking forward to in a couple years. It's yeah, like, have your own space. Yeah, where, where my bed is not here. <laughs> where it's like an office that would be nice yeah separate work from living yeah, exactly yeah that's it really helps I, yeah i was actually looking at offices but i was like but then i emptied a room and i was like no need really until i have the youtube crew doing challenges and stuff oh right yeah team arias oh, hey guys team arias here today nice we're doing the whipped cream challenge oh you're gonna be one of those youtubers darn it on the on the fourth channel you know? oh honestly there's just multiple factors to setting up recording you know you got to set up your audio device i use an at2020 you know you got to set that up set Ooh. up audacity make sure you know the input levels are good and everything make sure it's actually connected input wise yeah. to your microphone and not your webcam mic because that's going to be very bad if if you use the webcam mic mm -hmm. did that once before and <laughs> died rip was it was it the concert no it wasn't it wasn't one of the vlogs it was actually i think it was actually the 200 sub q a video which is why the audio is kind of meh because i just did the camera audio on that one uh don't tell anybody though yeah oh. <laughs> so that's why i don't like that video gotta set up yeah. the tripod i got a ring light more recently oh so that has no helped wonder. <laughs> what do you mean no wonder your video is look looking uh, right fancier now yeah guys. at first yeah. i was like i don't need a ring light and then i used it and i'm like oh my goodness this makes yeah. it look way better <laughs> the three-point lighting makes yeah. that came with the green screen Mm -hmm. It's the best. It makes everything look so lit. Oh. Oh, yeah, you have three point lighting. I have a ring light and then I have the light above me and then I have a lamp as well in my room to kind of like light up the area instead of my face to kind of yeah. brighten up the room to make it look better. Yeah, that's the setup life is, is tough. Yeah, I used to um, record by my bed pretty much. So setting up was tough because I had to like clean up every time mm -hmm. so I could actually yeah. walk <laughs> around. Wow. Especially with setting up the green screen, you know? Right. That was, it would, like, go in front of the door so I couldn't, you know, walk through a door. I would have to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So setup is tough. Yeah. But that's why I was, like, you know, trying to make it on YouTube. Right. Gotta, gotta reduce friction. Yeah, for Cause real. Because that's, for me, a lot of the time, like, the thing that makes me not film is the setup. It's mm -hmm. like, oh. And I'm, like, procrastinating and then it gets late and I'm, like, oh. I mean, setup usually isn't the thing that holds me back setup is pretty easy for me i can set up in about 10 minutes usually a mm -hmm. little bit less because i know what i'm doing now what holds you back from making videos is anything i know that there's something but i i can't remember it right now i don't know but when i start filming it gets really easy but just to start is yeah. tough sometimes yes yes that's it when you when you start recording and you have to do the same line like 10 times but once you start getting into like the flow of it it's easier it's all about the flow being more natural on camera has been easier for me since i've been doing this for like two years once you know what you're doing and you figured everything out you know audio lights video you, you know you're good i basically use the same exact background whereas you use like a different background in every video oh which i think is quite interesting yeah yeah because yeah i mean different videos different backgrounds see what yeah what i'm trying to incorporate is different series different backgrounds so like yeah. for guidance i had a different background i just <laughs> angled the camera differently basically and sat in a different position but i think i'm gonna move that because i think for guidance i want the fan art wall to be in the back and then for normal videos i'll have the normal setup and then for a very this new series i have a different setup it's tough when all you have is a room to work with pretty much and, right, and, yeah. and the park <laughs> at least you got that recording recording like what we're doing right now whoa meta but it's like once you finish it's always like that relief of like wow i just did that i, I love videos that are just you record for like 20 minutes and you're done with recording but then got other videos that it never ends it's weird because like usually the longer i record for the better the video ends up being and that's not like saying oh watch time i'm saying like script wise you know more content mate yeah just like yeah like usually the videos that take the least amount of time are the real talk videos which i don't think they're that great whatsoever but and those take the least amount of time to record 
But I, I don't do those all the time because I can't. I literally can't. I can't do that creatively. I just, that's not entertaining to me whatsoever. So it's like, but sometimes you got to let the people know what's happening, you know? And then you look at tubers like Jack's films with his yai. <laughs> get, making one yai a day, getting one, two million views. I'm like, oh, dang, boy. On that yai yeah. grind. I, I, I wouldn't want that to be me. Uploading daily, it's just like, it's a, it's a struggle. Especially for me because... Those vlogs that I did, like I was vlogging for like a week straight and I did daily vlogs oh, and that was, yeah. that was a pain. That was intense. The stupid thing is like, I don't even think those vlogs are that great because it didn't take me a week to make a video. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'll go back to daily content one day when I have the, a team. It's like literally, you can literally film, pass it off to a, somebody to edit. Recording is one of the parts that I like the least compared to everything else. I've gotten to the point where I actually kind of pick what clothes I'm going to wear for recording. <laughs> I kind of just, I'm like, what do I want to record? I don't know. Since I have my own merch, I guess I have to always wear that. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, <laughs> when, oh, cause you're, when you're in front of a green screen, you can't wear like green or blue. So I'm like, oh man, all my shirts right, are yeah. blue. Oh man. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't easy, man. It ain't easy being cheesy, you know? But I mean, recording, you know, it's, it's gotta get done. You know, if you don't have a recording, then you can't edit. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. You could animate. Yeah, but I mean, most of the time with animations, you do voiceovers. Get, get somebody else to do a voiceover? I mean, true. Sometimes I forget to start my audio or video. Oh no. <laughs> You, Rip. you probably that's, don't because you're a professional. But. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. This is something I use, you know, an external mic, record the video, and then sync it together. And I always do that always, always, because first of all, the audio is just way better. Plus, I think the mic in the shot, I don't know, I, I've kind of, I've grown to like it, you know, because at first I'm like, I want to try to keep the mic away from the shop, but when you do that, the audio quality is worse. So it's like, eh, nobody really cares as long as, you know, the audio sounds good, whatever. As long as the video is yeah, good. Like, well, both. Yeah, that's true. Once you get to the level of using an external mic, you have made it. I wouldn't say that, but. <laughs> Yeah, true. But it's just so much better, mate. Mm -hmm. Like, true. you don't notice it until you don't use it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Makes my voice sound a lot more luscious. Bass enhance. <laughs> Bass boost, treble Bass. boost. Bass boost, normalize, compressor. Equalizer. <laughs> noise yeah. reduction. I also add point ten echo. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I watched a movie about making your voice better on Audacity and that came up. The I only time I would ever use e Echo is if it was for an effect on purpose in a video or audio, you know, or if I'm trying to go for a specific sound. Um, I guess I use Echo, Audacity Echo a lot um, just because Premiere doesn't have the Echo feature. Ha, ha. What you mean, boy? I, I have Echo, which I never use because I've, I found a, I have a bunch of presets that are pretty good for audio, I have to admit. <laughs> All right, time for my favorite part of the creation process of videos, editing. Oh, that's kind of sometimes one of my favorite parts. Depends on the video. Sometimes when editing, I get in these moods where I'm like, this isn't that great. Why am I still editing this? And then literally 10 minutes later, I'm like, I love this video. <laughs> It's like, what in the world? You know, it's weird. That happened today. I was like, I'm not liking this. And then I was editing it more. And I'm like, you know what? I really like this. With editing, it's just, it's fun putting all the pieces together. I don't know how I just realized this, but it's basically like putting a puzzle together. And I don't know that's how true. I just fi figured that out just now, but that's basically what it is. I mean, it's only really fun editing when it's like a cool skit and you're like, oh man, look at all these cool effects. But when it's right, like a yeah. 40 minute talking video, I'm like, oh boy, so many jump cuts. Like, Dude, shit, that's, oh like, boy. that's like all of my videos. <laughs> exactly. I can't um, believe you like it. I mean, I guess it makes sense. But you I'm gotta like, keep oh, it boy. interesting, you know? I just hate the initial cutting you know like going through the audio and like because you already heard it so many times mm. I mean, you've written a script so you've heard it so many times and you know, i hear it again That's and true, yeah. cut it. but they actually get to the cool editing parts and i'm like okay yeah i always have the most fun in editing that's where i shine because i don't know if you know this but i've actually edited a couple of friends videos and they've been pretty impressed with uh, what i've been able to come up with in editing Ooh. you know so i know that's my strong suit you're starting a little business mastery I may eventually yeah i would Ooh. like to to do that you know once i get a better computer I i'm kind of really slow with editing currently because of my computer so i know editing or having more projects would wouldn't help for my sanity not yet but soon 
ish i don't know i feel like over the years with editing i've kind of found my own style and i i haven't really realized this until people have told me i'm like oh i guess i do have a style i guess hey it keeps that audience retention up yeah, they're like oh another master reef edits videos i feel that amazing. yeah my audience retention has been getting up to like 50 percent recently more so on my gems of the internets and my actual good videos oh it's, it's all a learning process i guess you know yeah yeah always Ooh, learning but yeah i mean i don't know if you ever learned like new editing skills premiere is just so ex- extensive you know there's so many cool things so i just learned something new mm-hmm. And I use it so much. I, I I learn and then I'm like, editing is fun now. When editing isn't fun, that's when you got to f- try to figure out to do something new. How do honestly. I make this editing fun? You know, try a new effect, you know, add it, make a joke, you know, um, I don't know, just do something Wait, different. I mean, you don't, you don't feel that though? The initial like cutting of clips? What do you mean? When you have the long string, oh, this is something audio. that we do different, I guess. Well, audio is synced to video, right? Oh. So the long string of you recording, pretty much. How do you not get bored cutting it up like forty minutes, and you have to like go through it, see which take is right take? Oh, and we're then, different. Yeah. So I edit from start to finish. I don't go through and cut the the good parts. I just kind of like edit as I go. And that's always how I've done it. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I go through the whole thing and then cut it up and then it's one big thing and then I edit from there. I mean, I've done that once or oh. twice with very specific projects, but most of the time I just like to go st- from start to finish. And then I have my script right in front of me and I can usually remember how many times I've done a take sometimes. So it's like, oh, I did two takes here. If the take isn't good, I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, please tell me you did another take. And usually I did do another take and then I go with that one. Tips with Matthew. <laughs> it's like, okay, Passy, please don't be an idiot and tell me you did that take again because that was terrible and i can't save it with (laughs) editing so you gotta you gotta (laughs) you eat snacks while editing it's very difficult to eat and edit at the same time so more recently when i've been taking my lunch breaks this is when i'll watch youtube because there's no way i can edit and eat at the same time i just can't I've tried. I can't multitask in that way. Just eating and watching something. I'm more focused on eating, which means it takes less time, which means more time for productivity. I like your style, mate. Once you edit, you export. But what do you do while your video is exporting? Ooh, sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Accurate, yeah. (laughs) Finally. I didn't think about that, yeah. Actually, that's... that's (laughs) actually why did i even ask that because i'm the exact same way it's like oh it's midnight yep time yeah. to i don't know why i was like oh yeah it's three ever. in the afternoon i'm done with the video no nope, that never happens anymore no i mean i mean sometimes and but i still you know mm-hmm. take a they don't take a nap but just lay down and, yeah. and you know do business development right from my phone mm-hmm. find new viewers one by one like hey i like your stuff on instagram please watch my channel <laughs> oh you're one of those people i was about to say hmm. dude i still have people reaching out to me for sub for sub and i'm like no i don't sub for sub and then they don't respond to me <laughs> so it's like oh okay i get a lot of sub for sub subs it sucks having my numbers inflated because mm. of all the sub for sub peeps but you know you can't really do anything about right, it yeah. so yeah True. thumbnail creation Ooh. <laughs> We both use GIMP, right? The the best worst thing ever. I don't know. I've always liked GIMP. I know that there's like free versions of Photoshop and stuff, but I, I've used GIMP for years and I've learned like so much in it. I don't want to take the time to learn a new program. GIMP is a free version. Like if I want to make a, a square, I have to make a new layer and call it square and then resize it to the size I want. Huh. Or if I want to make like an like an underline or something or like a box around text, I have to literally make a box and then cut out a box out of the box. Huh. I don't know. Thumbnail oh. creation has always been this thing of sometimes I know exactly what the thumbnail is going to be. Other times I have no clue. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of stuff on here and we'll see if it works. <laughs> you know, sometimes... Yeah. It works. Sometimes it doesn't. I remember with the guidance thumbnail, I'm like, okay, I I know what I want for the background, but I have no clue what to do after that. And so I was thinking of the title. I'm like, okay, well, you got to incorporate the title in your thumbnail somehow, right? And it has to make sense. So I was like, oh, do this and this. And I'm like, actually, whoa, that looks really cool. I've been kind of wondering what to do for the thumbnail of this video that I'm editing. And I think I know what to do something that matches the theme yeah you know like with my series i always have like a specific thumbnail theme for the series and i feel like going with that theme 
would help. I always want my thumbnails to look good, you know, because if your thumbnail looks terrible, why would anybody watch your video? Yeah. Speaking of thumbnails, I'm 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 planning on going through and redoing my old thumbnails. Uh, um, part of me wants to keep the history. Part of me says if I can make them better, get more views. Yeah, but the thing is, I hate ninety percent of my content. So why would I want new people to see my old content with most of my videos? Like they're not discoverable whatsoever. And I don't know if I can make them discoverable because they're very very i don't know how to explain it very 2016 mastery yeah which is bad oh 2016 mastery that was 2016 chill, eth ew i somehow found a vlog from 2016 and it showed hey, I- yeah, it had zach in it and it zach looks amazing zach is a beautiful man and i just look at me <laughs> and i'm like i look atrocious this is no why do i look this bad why didn't i realize i looked this bad before and why do i realize that now two years from now instead of the sr anyways yeah that mm-hmm so i'm going into episode one it? of the podcast this isn't episode one. <laughs> oh. this ain't the struggles this is the creativity time stuffs it's tough sometimes to find the right text color uh-huh. and font stuff because you know dark background or like yeah. a multicolored background of every colored rainbow in it. You're like, oh boy, what do I do for my text? GIMP is kind of cool, but not really because you can't do, you can't outline your text really. You can if you make another layer and move it under it. Yes. But. Oh yeah. 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 But that's, that's, the, that's, that's the basic. But it's more like, it's more like shadow. I don't know. For me, it's weird. I think more recently I haven't been adding text in the thumbnails. I've been trying to incorporate images more so to convey the thing like i'll have i just sometimes i think it looks better other times it's like yes i need words in the thumbnail because i have no clue how to convey this without using words in the thumbnail yeah. so it just depends on the series like gems of the internet i think it's it's pretty clear what it is you know you got the gem in the corner you got my cartoon face in another corner and you got the thing i'm talking about right smack dab in the middle you've you've had some criticism from from number blue about your thumbnails what's that all about is there oh is there that was no soon? that was because i kept on using my my cartoon character on the right of the thumbnail and looking back on it now i'm like yeah this looks too repetitive so i just cropped out the head and i went 2017 mastery style and put a cartoon head in the corner which i really like because it doesn't take up a lot of the space but you know it's my video and it just looks better plus it gives me more room to work in the thumbnail space which is always really fun so sometimes hard to like uh, make a thumbnail that's consistent with your brand True. but not repetitive yeah. and ugly plus having series recognition Mm -hmm. that's Uh, how i I usually have my title connect with my thumbnail always because you know there has to be a connection otherwise it's like wait what whoa what's this and then i see big tubers thumbnails i'm like why is my thumbnail not that cool i don't know if you ever noticed that's like so bright and stuff and like all this saturation is all the way up boy (laughs) saturation yeah that's something that i need to work on sometimes because i always forget that it's like saturation sometimes i'm like oh this looks saturated enough you know all the tips boy no I know the tips that people on YouTube have told me over the years. Once you make the thumbnail, right? You publish. Yeah, yeah once so once you make the thumbnail. Video. And then you get the views. Well, no. First, you got to distribute it. Otherwise, you get no views, rip. So, yeah, publishing and distribution. This is the publishing. I always got down, you know, publish. Boom, done. That's what 2016 me thought. 2018 is like, no, you got to spend an hour to two hours dis- distributing your video to make sure new people see it. Yeah, because if they don't, what are you doing? What are you even making your video for? You know yourself? Yeah, right. I distribute it a couple places. Share it to Instagram, my Ooh. personal Facebook mastery page. I got Snapchat, Anchor, sometimes Reddit, depending on the video. I, I've actually started to share my videos in DMs, but not to the people that I don't know to like my friends that I know watch my videos because I do that just in case I've been doing that more so on Instagram DMs sometimes notifications don't work so it's like a little back door where it's like hey I posted a video just to let you know but that's only to the Mm. people like I know who watch my videos the one thing with distribution that I've always done is I'm a part of a lot of uh, Facebook YouTuber groups you, you always see these people like sharing their link and then posting and then leaving. This is where they mess up. This is where they're missing out. I don't just post a link to my video. What I do is I explain the video in like a sentence or two. I paste the title of the video. I say, click here to watch the full video and then leave the link right down there. And then I press enter twice and then I paste, you know, what my channel's about. And then here's the kicker, right? I upload a little clip of my video. 
And then I just copy paste that to a bunch of Facebook YouTuber groups. So that way people see my video. And if they're interested in seeing more of it, then they can watch it. And I know I've gotten subscribers from that because people have commented saying, dude, your videos are really good from like the Facebook groups. I'm going to start doing that. Thanks, mates. I'm going to mm -hmm. I'm going to grow the channel. I like that. I like that, that you don't just post the videos, but Reddit is is tough to yeah. If it's like a very n niche video, I'll usually post it to Reddit sometimes. I don't always do Reddit, though, because usually the topics aren't that niche or big enough to find a subreddit for. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been to like Reddit's r slash videos or r slash YouTubers. They're spammed, mate. Those Facebook group stuff is good. But yeah, sometimes uh, on Reddit, uh, I try to distribute my video and I get a lot of haters because Reddit's a place of hate. There, there's on one hand, you can make a video about a topic and be like, I'll alienate my audience on YouTube, but I'll get, you know, people from Reddit to see it. Or you can, you know, not not make a video that's uh, shareable on Reddit and then your YouTube fans like it, but you don't get any more, you know, viewers from Reddit. I want like if I, if I want to make like Gary V video, like a lot of my people aren't going to be there. I'm gonna be like, who's Gary V? <laughs> <laughs> you know, For real though. but like, I think Gary I feel like you should it. make that eventually, though, because you know, like the ins and out of Gary V. It's I think it's a balance too. Um, yeah, of definitely introducing things to people. Eleven E Seven merch unboxing. Dude, oh. like who is Eleven E Seven, mate? <laughs> yeah, I'm that's... so confused. That was then, for me. But then I learned about 77 and I was like, oh, this is a great band. I only like three of their songs, but this is a great band. <laughs> 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 yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> well. Okay then. All okay, right. Then. All right. Fair enough, I guess. Well, thank you everybody for listening to episode three of Creative Minds. This has been a very interesting conversation about creativity and our creative processes. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Yes, me too. This has been a very interesting episode for all of us. Um, I did learn a lot today from Master Eve that I'm going to take into practice. Oh. And hopefully it works. Hopefully we believe in Master Eve. We'll see you guys in two weeks. And be sure to stay creative. Or how does that... I don't know. I can't remember how the outro goes. Rip. My bad. Rise. I should know. I edit the show. Rise. Ooh. What? Good outro. <laughs> Wait. Oh, sorry.